Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Gizmo Joe. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a camera lens for a Sony NEX series camera. Actually, this lens will fit on any Sony E-mount camera. So that means if you have a Sony Alpha series camera or any of their uh, most recent cameras, you can use this lens. Now, what's special about this particular lens is its price point. I picked up this lens on Amazon in the US mind you for about 30 bucks now if you have any idea how expensive DSLR camera lenses can be you know that they can chew a hole through your wallet faster than almost anything else and any good photographer wants a variety of different lenses at his or her disposal so you can be prepared for any sort of shooting scenario so when I saw that this guy was so cheap I had to give it a go so as most of you know if you've watched any of my previous videos I'm a big fan of the Sony NEX series of mirrorless cameras uh, like I said the Alpha series is their more modern uh, most current version of this camera however the NEX series you can get for under 200 bucks and it's a great, great camera still to this day. So let's uh, have a look at the box here. So as you can see, it's not all that special. It's got a couple markings on it, but first I just want to flick it over to show you here. This is the brand, Fotazi. Um, I'm not sure if anyone's ever heard of this brand before. I sure hadn't, but uh, I'm only an amateur photographer at best. So Fotazi may be a brand that you have heard of, but I had not. Now this is the N35, that is the model number. So if you're looking on Amazon, Type that in, Fotazi N35. And what you're looking at is a 35 millimeter lens. So it says here it's good for NEX mirrorless cameras, but I can confirm that this is indeed an E-mount uh, lens, so it should fit on any of your Alpha series cameras. But uh, as you can see here, it says C-mount, uh, but uh, again, E-mount is uh, definitely still works. And it says it's got a large aperture, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, what is this thing? Well, as you can see, it says on the top here, it says a TV lens. Now, when you find this thing on Amazon, you'll see that it's marketed for CCTV, which means uh, closed circuit. So that's like your security cameras and stuff like that. So I guess you can use this on security cameras. I'm not sure. If anybody knows, let me know. But uh, that is not why I bought it. So let's have a look and just open this guy up. All right, so inside, there's a little piece of paper here. I'll grab that first. So these are the instructions. Now, these are really, really important because, as you can say, this is an E-mount CCTV lens, blah, 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 blah. So what you got to do, when you attach the lens to this, basically your camera is going to say, I don't know what this is, I can't work. And you won't be able to take any photos. So it's really important that you follow these instructions. So I almost lost this. Uh, when I first opened this up, this fell out of the box, and I didn't notice it until much later. So I tried to mount the lens onto my camera, and it wasn't working. I was actually really disappointed. But once I followed those instructions, everything was all good. So I'll set those off to the side because I'll show you on my camera how to get to there, uh, that particular menu setting. So in the box here, you got nothing else other than this. Now, this is a sort of faux leather bag. It's actually nice because, uh, you know, I wasn't really expecting it. And again, it's so cheap. I just thought it would have been wrapped in some bubble wrap or something. So it's nice to have the little bag. Uh, if we pop this guy out of here. There's nothing else in there, so we'll toss that off to the side. And uh, again, here is the lens. Now, first impressions. Uh, it actually feels really nice. It feels premium. It has a, uh, it's all metal, I should mention, and it definitely has some heft to it. Uh, so it does feel like a pretty solid construction. Now, here's the lens cap, which is super flimsy, but, uh, you know, it will do. And we'll just push that off to the side there. As you can see, you got your Fatazi 35 millimeter and all your other markings. So as you can see here, you uh, this is going to be a totally manual sort of lens. So you adjust the inner ring, I guess, uh, and that is going to essentially allow more or less light in, depending on your situation. And then here is your focus ring. And you'll see it has the different gradients up at the top. So, again, I'm not a photographer. I don't know the terms or whatever of this particular uh, device. All I know is that it works because I tried it. So um, I wanted something cheap because, like I said, I am an amateur photographer. So I wanted something really, really cheap uh, just to bolster up my uh, lens arsenal. So... 
As you can see, this guy has an E-mount. You do not need an adapter or anything like that. What you can see here is that, if I can get this thing on, sorry guys, it's a little bit hard to see what I'm doing because I'm trying to film at the same time, but there you go. So uh, it snaps in fairly easily. It looks a bit funny, especially when compared to the 18 to 55 millimeter lens, which sticks out about yay big, And but it is nice and compact. And like I said, you have your two rings uh, for focusing and whatnot, and they're pretty easily accessed. So it feels pretty nice in the hand, and it doesn't look too funny. But let me quickly go through uh, this instructions just so if you guys decide to essentially get one yourself you know exactly what you need to do so basically when I first mounted this I didn't follow these instructions so this lens was on and it basically told me on my camera that I could you know it couldn't take any photos so I was you know super disappointed I was like oh it's a $30 paperweight but what you need to do is switch on the camera and go to the menu button so here you hit menu and then what you got to do is you go to setup, so you go to the little toolbox down there, you hit enter. And then basically what you want to do is you want to scroll down to this option here, which says release without lens. And this basically sets whether the shutter can open when the lens is not attached, because I'll get into a minute as to why this technically doesn't uh, register. So what you want to do is you want essentially the shutter to open when this is attached to it, because it does not recognize this as a lens, funny or not. Anyway, so basically what you do is you click that to enable. So once you enable that, it will automatically, it will, by default, it will be disabled, but you want to enable that option. So again, it's just menu, setup, and then release without lens. You want to enable that option. So until you do that, you won't be able to use that lens. So just keep that in mind if you do decide to grab one. But uh, what I'll do is I'll just flick it off, and I'll see if I can get this guy back on. Sorry, excuse, please excuse my... <laughs> inability to put this guy on. But once we fire it up, what you'll see is that, uh, sure enough, it does work. And what you'll notice is down at the bottom here, all of your um, you know, light meters and stuff will change depending on uh, how you turn the various rings on the lens. Now, I've played around and shot with this, and I'll put some sample photos at the end so you guys can have a look and see you know, what its sort of capabilities are. But basically, it's a, it's a weird little lens. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's great for shooting landscapes. It's definitely better for sort of close-ups or portraits. But what it does is it sort of diffuses around, uh, gives this kind of like blurry effect, I guess, is, is, is the right terminology, sort of in the, in the frame, the, the outer frame of, of the photo. Uh, and it's, it's kind of cool, and it is definitely interesting. And you can mess around with it a little bit more and get some really, really cool effects with it. I definitely am interested in playing around with it. I'll definitely keep it in my camera bag because I think uh, it is really cool. And for 30 bucks, you can't really go wrong. It is something that uh, is a little interesting. It can definitely maybe give you some photos that you wouldn't have otherwise normally been able to shoot, uh, you know, just because this is just such an odd little lens. But anyway, that's pretty much going to do it. I'm going to have to say that the Fatazi N35 is a great buy if you're looking for a really cheap, kind of unusual uh, lens that you can experiment with, uh, with your Sony E-mount DSLR mirrorless camera. Uh, definitely pick one up. I'll leave a link down in the description. Uh, I said, again, you can buy it from Amazon. I bought mine in the States, so it's about 30 bucks. If you're shipping it, uh, it could be a little bit more than that, and I apologize. But this guy is normally about 30 US dollars, which is a steal. So grab one and stick around for some sample photos. And that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and of course hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And I will catch you all next week with a brand new video. This is Gizmo Joe signing off.